Good evening, everybody. Breaking news tonight. The president today announcing major foreign policy decisions on Iran. First, President Trump has designated the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps to be terrorists. This is the first time that the United States has ever declared a military unit of a government to be terrorists. President Trump also announcing his decision to not certify the Iran nuclear deal. The president took these actions because, as he has said often, he finds the Obama agreement to be unacceptable. And President Trump vowed to cancel it altogether if Congress and our allies don't address the deal's serious flaws. We cannot and will not make this certification. We will not continue down a path whose predictable conclusion is more violence, more terror, and the very real threat of Iran's nuclear breakout. In the event we are not able to reach a solution working with Congress and our allies, then the agreement will be terminated. We'll be taking up the president's efforts to fix the foreign policy mess that he inherited. Also tonight, the Trump administration announcing it will immediately halt billions of dollars in Obamacare subsidies to insurance companies. The move meant to increase pressure on Congress to repeal the disastrous law. We're taking a little different route than we had hoped because getting Congress, they forgot what their pledges were. So we're going a little different route. But you know what? In the end, it's going to be just as effective, and maybe it'll even be better. We'll take up what has been a week of decisive action by the president and firefighters in Northern California tonight battling another round of low humidity and high winds as they battle 17 wildfires that are raging uh, throughout wine country. The devastating wildfires have now killed 32 people, left hundreds missing. We'll have the full report for you here tonight. Our top story, President Trump taking bold action reversing the Obama-era policy of appeasement of Iran. President Trump announcing he is decertifying the Iran nuclear deal, a deal the president says is not in the national security interest of this country. The president also today targeting Iran's Revolutionary Guard and its destabilizing actions in Syria and Iraq. I am authorizing the Treasury Department to further sanction the entire Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps for its support for terrorism and to apply sanctions to its officials, agents, and affiliates. What will be the effect of the president's decisions on Iran, the Obama nuclear deal with Iran, Syria, Iraq? What is the significance of, of what uh, even Democrats and the left are acknowledging is a bold reversal of the Obama doctrine in the Middle East? Joining us tonight, retired four-star General Jack Keane, Fox News military analyst. General, let's start with this deal. It was not exactly as had been envisioned by uh, many of the experts in, uh, in national security. The president found a path forward. Your thoughts on its effectiveness? Yeah, well, well, first of all, you put your finger right on it, Lou, when you said in the introduction, the, uh, the Obama period of appeasement with the Iranians is over. And wh what we have here with uh, President Trump, he's absolutely formalized the fact that uh, the United States, as a global power, w along with our allies, are going to confront the Iranians and contain their aggression. I, I love the comprehensive nature of this policy decision that we're going to neutralize Iran's be, uh, malign behavior in the region, we're going to work with our allies and our partners to reset the balance of power, that we're going to stop the R IRGC as, mu as much as we can, the Revolutionary Guard funding with our allies mm -hmm. who are doing business with them, we're going to shut down the ballistic missile program, is, and also there's going to be no path to a nuclear weapon. And, and obviously we're all going to focus a certain degree on what he's doing with the nuclear deal, but it just underscores, Lou, I mean, all those things I just mentioned should have been part of the deal. 
and and they're outside the the, the scope of the deal, uh, sadly, and and that's really at the heart of this problem. It, it is it is such a poor instrument, and why people will out there because they're emotionally attached to it, defend it. Uh, it's kind of sad commentary when it when it's not going to accomplish even what it started out to accomplish, and that is that I are on a nuclear weapon and it guarantees them nuclear weapons. Today, General, it was made pretty clear by uh, uh, European nations uh, that uh, they feel that this will lead uh, to greater uh, activity on the part of the, uh, the the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. Uh, that they will somehow uh, uh, respond to this uh, in a violent manner as if they weren't already doing so. Uh, it, it's sort of a stunning position for the Europeans to take. Well, they're feckless leaders, Lou. I mean, they can't protect their own people. They're one leader after another in Europe after 38 attacks on NATO by ISIS. You know, it, it has failed to change a single policy that I'm aware of to curb that kind of activity. So we should not be surprised. Yes, yet here's what I do believe will happen. I do believe uh, the Revolutionary Guards will conduct attacks against Americans in Iraq when they're on the move and when they're uh, at their bases. They will likely introduce again that advanced IAD that they used against us for three or four years until we defeated the Iraqi Shia militia. Who are the proxies for the Iranians? That is right. that is likely to take place. That's not going to intimidate us uh, at at all. We've dealt with these folks uh, before, and we have the wherewithal, you know, to it, deal with them again. General, uh, in conclusion, at, at what point does the United States, with our service members being killed by Iran or its proxies, but at the behest of uh, the Iranian regime, which the president referred to as a rogue regime, quite correctly. At what point do we respond directly to Iran and make them pay a price? Well, we'll see what they actually do. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm with you 100 percent. And it, we should have we should have done things before. We had recommended to the Bush administration that we take down the two training bases from which all of those Iraqi Shia militia that were killing us were coming from. But he chose uh, not to do that, and, and, and that was a mistake. And I know pe people around uh, President Bush at the time, you know, wanted him to do that. And that would have been a, a direct attack to prevent that kind of uh, malign behavior taking place. We'll see what the Trump team does. Uh, they're, they're of a mind here to confront the Iranians for sure. They know the appeasement isn't working. Iran isn't coming into the fold of responsible nationhood in the Middle East. They're, they're more aggressive than they ever have been. You know, this deal, it's given them billions, hundreds of billions of right. dollars, and it's given them a, a sense of moral high ground because they've got some legitimacy. After all, the, the most powerful nations in the world signed the deal with them, right. and, 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 and that has given them hubris and confidence. Now we're going to stand up to them. General Jack Keane, always great to have you with us. Thank you. Thanks yeah, so much. good talking to you, Lou. Firefighters in Northern California tonight are making progress against the deadliest wildfires in that state's history. Unfortunately, high winds and hot weather is in the forecast for this weekend. Fox News senior correspondent Adam Housley is in Oakville, California, in Napa Valley with our report. We have people that have been out here going on their fifth day. We are going to try to get them off. And replace them. As fatigue sets in for those battling the deadliest wildfire outbreak in California's history, fresh firefighters get their marching orders for what could be a busy weekend. We need all of you to keep doing what you're doing. We just need to support you mentally and physically so that we can continue this operation. An operation that includes more than 9,000 emergency responders, numbers that are increasing by the hour as officials issued another round of red flag warnings. One of the things that's being predicted for the weekend, for Saturday evening, is red flag warnings with high north winds again. Currently, they're saying they could be as high as 50 mile an hour winds. While containment for some of the larger wine country fires is now in double digits, there are still areas of concern. They're everywhere. There's little pockets. There's parts that we just can't get to. There's parts, so we're waiting for it. Hey, go! Just like anything else, you know, there's good days and bad days. Alameda County Sheriff's Office. With the possibility of more bad days ahead, sheriffs are going door to door to make sure that those in danger have gotten out. But there are some who refuse to leave, like Bob Fate and his son, who are defending their home with the help of firefighters. I'm not leaving. Uh, we're going to be here. 
This is our home. This is our generation. This, we're not leaving. We're seeing our neighbors' homes go up in flames. We're hearing their propane tanks go off like grenades. We haven't slept in nights. Others say they didn't wait. When you have to run, you have to run, no problem, no, you know, no choice, with nothing. You have to live faster, and so you have to live with nothing, you just have to save your life and your kid's life. While rain could come by the middle of next week, forecasts are for higher winds over this weekend. The haze you see behind me is actually a good sign, Lou. That means they're hammering these fires from the air with more water with help from the National Guard. Lou? Adam, thanks so much. Adam Housley reporting. We're coming right back. A lot to cover tonight. Stay with us. Keeping his promises, President Trump deciding not to certify the Iranian nuclear deal. I didn't have a schedule, but if I did have a schedule, I would say we are substantially ahead of schedule. We take up what may be the most accomplished presidency in modern American history. Ed Rollins joins me. And former U.N. Ambassador Samantha Power in front of the House Intelligence Committee there to answer questions about her unmasking of American citizens. We take up the search for answers in the Obama spy scandal. That's next. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hollywood's Harvey Weinstein scandal worsens, it seems, by the hour. Amazon has suspended its studio chief, Roy Price, over allegations he sexually harassed a producer and ignored claims by actress Rose McGowan that Weinstein had raped her. The claims against Weinstein are now so rampant that actress Jane Fonda has expressed regret for not speaking out herself earlier. I found out about Harvey about a year ago, and I'm ashamed that I didn't say anything right then. One of the women who has spoken out um, Rosanna Arquette told me, let's not think that this is some unique, horrific, this goes on all the time. A remarkable admission uh, and an unfortunate one, perhaps even tragic. It appears Hillary Clinton has finally lost it completely. Clinton tried to defend her Hollywood uh, pal, Harvey Weinstein, today on the BBC she hurled accusations at President Trump until the host, Andrew Marr, called her out. The former first lady called out on her own obvious and instant hypocrisy. This kind of behavior cannot be tolerated anywhere, whether it's in entertainment, politics. Well, you know, after all, we have someone admitting to being a sexual assaulter in the Oval Office. In your book, the three women brought onto stage mm -hmm. by Trump attacking your husband, and you kind of dismissed them. Was that the right thing to do? Are you sure about that? Well, yes, because that had all been litigated. I mean, that was the subject of a huge, uh, you mm. know, investigation, as you might recall, in the late 90s. And uh, there were conclusions drawn, and that was clearly in the past. Clearly in the past. Joining me now, Ed Rollins, chairman of the Great America PAC, a member of the Political Consultant Hall of Fame, an esteemed member, I might add, and Fox News contributor. Good to have you here. What do you make of her emotional state? Uh, total hypocrisy. Uh, the absurdity of a woman who was covered up for her husband when he was governor, when he was president, uh, and even today. Uh, and, and Harvey Weinstein, who's one of his, her, their great friends, uh, he put on her big birthday party. That is a culture that they have basically have been in total denial on bad behavior. And I think to a certain extent, she had apologized to the country. And certainly the country made the right choice in not making sure she was our leader. And her utterly uh, disgusting, appalling uh, entry trying to re... She didn't want to relitigate, you notice, her husband's, uh, 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 oh. the charges against him, and by the way, uh, the, the, uh, the liability for which he stood. Just take her behavior. And, and, and to sit there and to uh, attack the President of the United States again as if it's 2016 uh, and they're candidates, I, it, it is appalling. Well, she, she, utterly... she, she attacked the women who basically made the charges that turned out to be truthful. Yeah. And she sort of, sort of dismissed it. That's all been litigated. The way it was litigated is the man was impeached. Uh, he wasn't convicted by the Senate, but he was impeached by the House of Representatives. And he was sued. And he was sued, and he lied under oath. And, you know, let's, 
Uh, let's, he was disbarred. Right. You know, all those, I mean, all those, all those little things like that. So items. my sense, she had to just bite her tongue, go teach at Columbia, wherever she wants to teach, and just not talk about her good friend Harvey Weinstein or President Trump. Uh, it, it is. It's appalling. It truly is. Uh, let, let's talk about the president uh, today. I, I mean, the man is taking action. He is doing exactly what he said he would right. do on the campaign trail. Uh, we have reached, I, I think, a, a, a level here of presidential uh, faith keeping uh, that is extraordinary. It's, it's, it's promises made, promises kept. And I think he basically said to the Congress, you made promises, go fix health care. They wouldn't do it. He started yesterday by trying to, with, through executive orders, doing as much as he could. Uh, today, he took a dramatic step forward uh, uh, in, in, in taking a, a, a subsidy that, that was illegal, ruled illegal by the court. Said I'm not going to I'm not going to basically you, subsidize uh, uh, insurance companies that uh, if the Congress wants to appropriate money for that fine but they haven't uh, the court has said I shouldn't do that and I cut it off and then it was the, illegal when uh, President Obama and, did and, it and, and he's reversing he's it. reversing it and I think what he's done the thing he's not getting a lot of credit for is he has really undone the vast majority of the damage that was done by President Obama by executive orders and what have you. And now he basically is trying to correct the legislative stuff that was done that was that, that's, that's so difficult. Unfortunately, I, I think, uh, and, and I take, uh, I, I understand what you are saying, uh, but unfortunately in foreign policy, it's going to take some time uh, and great resolve uh, to fix what he did as uh, Obama. Well, uh, he, he, it, and, just, he, he and, and Kerry and, and Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State's, there's you know, a, there's and, a pair. Uh, they, they were a pair, and, I, and, the, and, the, and the reality is, what he said today to the Iranians, I know you're cheating. I know it was a bad deal. I said it was a bad deal when it happened. And I'm basically, I've got you on notice. Obama knew they were cheating. Well, he didn't care. He wants to be yeah. part of the world, the world global community, and have the French and everybody else tell you oh, what a great diplomat you, know, you are. If you examine the Obama years, every major decision he made, right. And then no one can define what the Obama doctrine is. Lead from behind. But it is, without question, decisions taken against the U.S. national oh, interest. Absolutely. absolutely. It, it is, it, there isn't, I can't think of an exception. I, I'll never forget when he went to West Point and made a speech to the young cadets that were there, going to be the future military leaders. And you have to say, you're going to be a different kind of leader. You're not going to be a military leader. This isn't about war anymore. This is about diplomacy. You think he's talking to the former Foreign Service School. And I, uh, I walked or, out of there. Or the Brookings it? Institution. Right. Or, so, yeah. it is appalling. We do have a leader. We do have a leader now. You know, good and, and I think that we're going to see these numbers, his polling numbers, uh, reflect that. Because even though there is a built-in bias right. against him on the part of uh, the news organizations, uh, the majority of them that run these polls, uh, you're seeing strength out there. I, I mean, I, I was giving a speech at uh, Hillsdale College. To see the enthusiasm for Donald Trump as our president, uh, and the acknowledgement of what he's achieving is is, is well, terrific. It's wonderful. He's not going to stop. He's going to he's going to as I said, promises made, promises kept. He's going to turn this country around, uh, uh, and, and I think that's so important. And it's underway. We're, we're going to talk more about that here later in the broadcast and show you some of the evidence that Ed is referring to. Ed Rollins, thanks, sir. My pleasure. Be sure to vote in our poll tonight. The question is, do you believe the Dems should give back the money they've received from the entertainment industry uh, until the full extent of Hollywood's harassment culture has been exposed? Cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. We'd like to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram at Lou Dobbs tonight. Las Vegas police again revising the timeline of the October 1st shooting at Mandalay Bay and the massacre that followed. Authorities now say Stephen Paddock shot at a security guard on his hotel floor, the 32nd floor, at approximately the same time, the very same time that he started to shoot at the concert goers below. The new timeline comes a day after the hotel owner disputed the police department's revised timeline showing a six-minute interval between the two events. On Wall Street, stocks closing higher and setting records. The Dow up 31 points, the S&P up 2, and the Nasdaq up 14, closing at a new record high volume on the big board, 3.1 billion shares. Health insurance companies plunging following the president's announcement he is ending 
their subsidies effective immediately. Good news for the economy, consumer confidence hitting the highest level since 2004. And Facebook getting into the food delivery business, allowing their users to order from restaurants on its site. And a reminder, listen to my reports three times a day, coast to coast on the Salem Radio Network. Up next, President Trump determined to make America safe and great again. We take decisive action against those who would threaten our people with harm. And we will be decisive because we know that the first duty of government is to serve its citizens. Serve its citizens. What a novel idea on the part of the President of the United States. This one has had that idea since he entered the race for the presidency back in 2015. Well, the president's successful week is the subject of my commentary here next. Let's talk about how it feels to win, win, and win some more. Stay with us. We'll be right back. President Trump taking action this week to deliver on his campaign promises and to working hard to roll back the mistakes and the misguided policies of his predecessor. The president today refusing to recertify the Iranian nuclear deal, which then President Obama called historic. President Trump today warned Republican leaders he will terminate that agreement altogether if McConnell and Ryan fail to restore sanctions against Iran. Congressional and senatorial ineptitude forcing the president to take action on Obamacare as well. President Trump cutting off billions of dollars of subsidy payments to health insurance companies. The president also signing an executive order allowing interstate competition for health insurers. And this week, the president also took action to put his 70-point immigration enforcement plan to work, including demands that must be met if Congress wants a deal of any kind on DACA. And it is clear President Trump means to fix the mess left him by Obama, with or without the help of congressional leaders. He also met with Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau. He nominated a new DHS secretary and campaigned for tax cuts in Pennsylvania. All of this as the Trump economy rolls on. Markets tonight are at record highs. Consumer confidence at the highest level in 13 years. All of this presidential work, all of these presidential actions, threatening the establishment, of course, the swamp. That's why the left, the GOP establishment and elites, big business, all absolutely hate any success demonstrated by the Trump administration. And there is a mounting, mounting number of successes the president can claim and the American people can say, thank you, Mr. President. All the while this week, Congress and the Senate well, they were lazing about in the D.C. swamp of many critters. It is truly fun to watch, isn't it? Now the quotation of the evening. This from John C. Maxwell, who said, quote, A leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. We're coming right back. President Trump announcing he will not recertify the Obama-Iranian nuclear deal. As I have said many times, the Iran deal was one of the worst and most one-sided transactions the United States has ever entered into. We take up President Trump's top new policy toward the rogue regime in Iran. Matt Slap and Tammy Bruce join me next. And this thrill-seeking motorcyclist has perfected almost every trick in the motorcycle book. We'll show you his best tail whips and backflips coming up here next. Stay with us. You don't want to miss it. The rhinos in Congress and the leadership still standing in the way of President Trump's agenda. The Washington Post saying Arizona Senator John McCain could cast the deciding vote again against tax cuts this time, just as he killed the health care. Bill and another health care opponent, Maine Senator Susan Collins, you'll be delighted to hear. She is just shocking everyone. 
She's going to stay in the public trough, I mean in the Senate, rather than run for the governor of her state. Joining me now, Matt Slap, chairman of the American Conservative Union, great American, Washington Times columnist, Fox News contributor, Tammy Bruce, also great American, and delighted to have you both here. Great to be here. Let, let's start with these successes. I, I mean, this has been a, a, an extraordinary week for the president. Mm -hmm. He's He talked on the campaign trail about action, not words. He's a man of action, and he's delivering, and he doesn't need McConnell. He's serving notice as well to Capitol Hill. Yeah, he is, and this is what's really, it ends up being what Capitol Hill being an a, a obstructionist framework has really ended up being a benefit for the president, allowing him to learn how to move past them, to highlight really his strengths, which is getting things done on his own, and imagine what could happen if, in fact, everybody got it and everybody wanted to serve the American people the way the president is. So we're, we're in luck in that regard. Uh, but clearly, there are large things that, that the government needs to get done, that, that McConnell and Ryan need to move forward. And if they don't, as there was this group of uh, conservative groups earlier uh, this week saying uh, that McConnell should step down, get yeah. out. It's time. Matt, I, isn't it the reality that the GOP establishment uh, the entrenched, uh, uh, the, those who are entrenched in the public trough, uh, the Democratic uh, elites, the business establishment, they all really understand one thing. If President Trump succeeds, and he is succeeding beyond, I think, anyone's wildest imagination to this point, if he succeeds, they're all in a hell of a lot of trouble. Oh, that's absolutely right. And, you know, uh, just behind uh, all of this is sheer panic still from all of those quarters. And, and let's talk about Susan Collins just for a minute, oh. because we're, no. we're oh come on, <laughs> let, let me just let me just say this because in the state of Maine, which we've been told forever that the more moderate and liberal you are as a Republican, the better you'll do. You know why she's staying in the Senate, Lou? The true story is, is that she wants to be the governor of Maine, but she can't get out of a Republican primary. Even Republicans in Maine mm. are tired of her act because it, it, it's not ideological. It is, it is conservatives, it's moderates, it's people across this country who are sick and tired of the fact that Congress says they will do things, and Republicans in Congress say they will do things, and they simply fail to get them done, and they're not, they're not going to take it anymore. Let's go to tax reform, tax cuts. Is it realistic to even consider the possibility that there would be tax cuts? The Speaker Ryan, when he wasn't creating a foreign policy for Puerto Rico uh, today, uh, it was suggesting that uh, he's going to keep people working even on Fridays, if you can imagine Ooh. that. Oh, my goodness. What a threat. It might break a sweat ah. out there. <laughs> Look, I've said this for a while, and it's, it's not brain surgery. Uh, it, nothing's going to happen this year. I mean, they, they couldn't deliver with Obamacare. There's a reason for that. That wasn't a fluke. It was a, a, it, it's what I think you, McConnell wanted. And, and I think that we're going to be in the same dynamic here. McConnell actually noted that they would get tax reform by the end of this Congress. Mm -hmm. which means he's anticipating next year. So he's already yeah, deciding McConnell, to do it in that fashion. I would say that McConnell, Matt, is anticipating having uh, you know, taken down another uh, major uh, agenda item. Uh, the man is, he's becoming loathsome in his lack of principle and integrity, uh, fidelity, uh, and concern about the national interest. Well, I'm going to risk doing something here on a Friday, and that is to agitate you both. I actually think he's. You don't have to under, worry about me, and but you're Tammy's out of town. Gonna, <laughs> Wait, you're not I'm worried in, you're about not. Tammy. I think that McConnell actually understands the political noose that's around his neck. That if we really do fail, and I'm a Republican, if we really do fail, we've already failed on Obamacare. Mm -hmm. If we fail in taxes, which, by the way, is going to be awfully tough, I agree with Tammy. Aw, Tammy, awfully tough to get done. If we fail on that as well, I think there's going to be a wholesale revolt in the Republican Party, and I think it's going to be off with well, everyone. Well, if there's any sense of self-preservation, you would assume that some of the people in the conference would want to win, to succeed, and to do so lined up shoulder to shoulder with the president. Uh, but, it, it is, it, it's startling to watch this. It is startling, but they're not blaming the president because the pre they want the president's agenda. And in the Senate, the John McCain's and the Bob Corker's and the Susan Collins, I, I'll tell you, I think in these primaries across this country, I do think you're going to see wholesale change because no. you can't keep winning elections and not getting anything done. Well, uh, this president is getting things done, and that is going to be the headline that will be 
uh, greeting the eyes of everyone walking into polling booths in the uh, 2018 midterms. And I think that everyone in, on Capitol Hill should understand something. There will be two winners. It will be the country, and it will be the president who leads in the successes that he is uh, chalking up on er every week. They are going to be decimated, uh, and, and irrespective, uh, Donald Trump as president will prevail again. Uh, it's, it's, there's just no way. There's just no way that uh, these kind of small people like Ryan and McConnell uh, can can in any way uh, impede that. Maybe the the agenda, but not the president. Matt Get it Slapp, done. Matt Slap, Tammy Bruce. Thank you both for being with us. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. And please roll the video. Watch as this athlete takes his bike on a high-flying ride in sunny California, effortlessly flying through the air, performing mesmerizing and sensational flips and turns, simply phenomenal. And our words of the night are mesmerizing and phenomenal. I haven't used those in months. I am so proud of me. Up next, President Trump fighting back against nuclear threats. There are also many people who believe that Iran is dealing with North Korea. The longer we ignore a threat, the worse that threat becomes. John Hanna takes up the moves by the Trump administration here next. Stay with us. We'll be right back. North Korea again threatening to launch missiles toward the U.S. territory of Guam. Rocket man Kim Jong-un is upset about joint U.S. and South Korean naval drills. They're scheduled to start Monday in the waters around the peninsula. Joining me now, former Cheney advisor, senior counselor at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, John Hanna. John, great to have you with us. Hello. I, I, this has been, as we were discussing uh, earlier in the broadcast, a remarkable week of leadership for the President of the United States. Uh, on Iran, on domestic issues, whether they be immigration, uh, you name it. And we're looking at an economy that is right now uh, strong, it is growing, uh, and the confidence of the, uh, of the American people uh, is reflected in sentiment uh, surveys and indexes. This is something that the left has feared from the moment that Donald Trump jumped into uh, the race and ultimately won the White House. Yeah, well, let me uh, just refer to the Iran case, Lou. This, what happened today, I think, is just a major inflection point in the history of U.S. policy toward Iran. In over four decades, no American president prior to Donald Trump has ever had a comprehensive strategy to push back against Iranian aggression and Iranian attacks against American interests. Uh, Donald Trump has now, in, a, in essence, declared war on the Islamic Republic's Revolutionary Guard Corps. And uh, we are hearing from our allies, particularly in Europe, uh, intimations that they fear that there will be greater uh, activity, uh, terrorism on the part of the, uh, the elite Republican Guard of Iran. Uh, meanwhile, that's precisely what they do day in and day out. The largest state sponsor of terrorism, its principal arm, is the uh, Revolutionary Guard. That's an, exactly right, Lou. Uh, the Revolutionary Guard is the tip of the spear for all of Iran's uh, uh, malignant behavior throughout the, the Middle East, not only the nuclear program, the human rights abuses, the terrorism, the regional aggression, the ballistic missile program they are all controlled by the IRGC. This is no longer a clerical regime in Iran. This is an IRGC regime, and the president has put a target on the IRGC for the first time in, in, in nearly four decades of American policy toward Iran. And remarkably, to credit the president further. He has taken this action without the support of the leadership of the Republican Party in either the Senate or the House. He is operating against the wishes of many of our allies who 
uh, are utterly dependent on the United States for their uh, ultimate uh, national security and protection. Uh, and it's, it's an extraordinary moment, as you say, because he is showing true presidential leadership uh, and he is standing tall if, uh, and unfortunately, for the most part, alone in the decisions he's making. I think there's some truth to that, Lou, but I think this guy is a pretty masterful negotiator. What he has said to these Europeans, to Congress, to the Iranians, is that, look, if you're so in love with, the, with, with this nuclear deal, uh, uh, I'm prepared to stay with it, but only if you work with me to actually improve it and fix these fatal flaws that exist in this regime. Right. That is the That's sunset. That's in terms of the deal, but what I'm talking about, John, is in standing up and designating uh, the IRGC uh, terrorists and taking actions with sanctions from the Treasury Department under that designation is remarkable. And he stood, as I said, tall, and for the most part, alone, uh, with a reticent, uh, I could use other adjectives, allies in Europe, uh, and even, uh, and most especially with the Republican leadership. I mean, we were listening to Bob Corker go on today. Uh, this is a disgrace to watch this man uh, behave in, in this fashion against the interest of the country, in my judgment, and certainly the agenda of the president. Listen, the Europeans will moan, but the fact is the IRGC uh, controls the commanding heights of the Iranian economy. They are now a terrorist group under U.S. designation. No European business is going to want to take the risk that the counterparty that they're dealing with is, in fact, a front company for a terrorist organization. This is going to have a tremendous chilling effect on the markets, whatever European feckless leaders say about it. In the next 60 days, we'll find out how feckless the leadership of the Republican Party is on Capitol Hill. John Hanna, thanks so much for being with us. Good to see you. Thank you, Lou. Thank you. Up next, NFL ratings continue to fall as players continue to insult the flag, the anthem, and the country. We'll take it up with former NFL great and Super Bowl champion Burgess Owens joins me right after the break. Stay with us. We'll take it all up. In our online poll last night, we asked you, is it time for the NFL to hand out harsh penalties for players who continue to insult the anthem and our flag? 94% of you say you think so. Absolutely yes. And uh, Thursday night football down 5% from the week before. We haven't got the final ratings, but that's the indicator, the trajectory of, uh, of the NFL viewership as millions of fans are turning their backs on the league for allowing players to insult the anthem and the country. Through the first five weeks, average viewership of all nationally televised NFL games down 7% from a year ago. And that, that was uh, to follow an even worse year in 2015, 18% down from the 2015. Despite those uh, ratings uh, crashes, Commissioner Goodell refuses to force his players to respect America. And a Louisiana Sheriff's Office is now boycotting Ford and its police cars over the car makers' support of NFL players protesting during the national anthem. Sheriff Julian Whittington says he refuses to support those who show disrespect. Well, joining me now, former NFL player, author, Burgess Owens. And Burgess, it's great to have you with us. You, you have been outspoken on this. We know that the NFL owners are going to meet with the commissioner uh, next week. We also don't know what to expect, but they seem to be very proud at NFL headquarters of not in any way uh, enforcing uh, a, a private employer uh, contract for behavior <coughs> with the players. I mean, it, it, it's stunning. It is. Hi, Lou. I'm looking forward to chatting with you. Um, and what, what you have to understand is the reason why we're here 
is because there's leftists within the NFL. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's not the days of Al Davis and uh, Vince Lombardi. They're becoming political tools for the, for the Democrats. And the goal, simply last year, was to help get Hillary Clinton elected. So to have one of the guys sit on, get on a knee and energize the, the black base, which they've done every uh, election cycle, is what they do best. So that's the reason why it's it all now. What what's happened right. is they took the bridge too far and uh, didn't realize the American people uh, don't think they're all that, as they think they are. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just proud of a country, Lou, that actually said, you know what, we care about our country so much more than we care about entertainers. We'll turn you off. We, if you're a yeah. bad product, I don't care what you have done in the past, we'll turn you off. And I'm looking forward to seeing the results of that in, in the end of the day. Yeah, it, 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 next week, I mean, Goodell uh, and uh, uh, <coughs> Joe Lockhart is his flack. Uh, basically, it, uh, I mean, they're getting kind of belligerent. They're saying they're not going to compel conduct on the part of players. Uh, maybe this explains why we've seen so many arrests in the NFL, that the commissioner doesn't really know what kind of standard <coughs> to hold players to. It, it's truly a, uh, it's an insult. He sees the consequence of it. I mean, we're down 18% in viewership in the past two years. First of all, I... I the NFL, the, the free, free market is going to take care of this issue. We're going to get through it. But you just hit on something I think is more important. I am so thankful for a president who drew a line in the sand and said, you know what, guys, your progressive ways of taking away our, our heritage, our culture, and, and, and uh, teaching our, our, our kids that we shouldn't respect who, we, who we've been in the past, it comes to an end. And, uh, and that's where we are. We're actually having a conversation that really should have been had a long time ago. What Americans need to understand is these kids have been purposely trained to think the way they are. You go into a community where 83% of black teen males are unemployed. We, in the state of California, liberal land, 70% of black boys are illiterate. Uh, we have 70% uh, of, of black men that are, that are leaving, forsaking their family. And I can go through a litany of, of other things. Why don't you hear about this? Because misery is a, misery is a political strategy for these guys. And it's time yeah. for us to turn up against them and know what we're de dealing with. And it looks like that's underway. Burgess Owens, great to have you here. Come back soon. Good to talk. Thank you, Lou. And that's it we for us. <laughs> yes, sir. That's it for us tonight. Uh, joining us tomorrow, John Bolton. Please join us. Good night from New York.